Hello, everyone. We are live here with Power Hour with Power Players. Uh, this week, we've got David Serpa with us, who is a real estate agent out in California growing his real estate team. So we're going to hear all about his business. Um, let me just give you all a little kind of background on David. So his big claim to fame that uh, I think a lot of us as team leaders would strive for is 100% uh, of his agents are making over six figures. And I think as real estate agents who are solo, we would want to know what you're doing. As team leaders, we would want to know what you're doing and how we can get our agents to have that same success. Selling okay. hundreds of homes, over 1.4 mil GCI. So we're going to get into all of that. I just want to let you guys know as the audience that if y'all have questions or comments during this, please go ahead and uh, throw them up here. We can see those questions, comments, and we will be answering those throughout the show. Um, let us know if you like what you're hearing because we want to make sure we're always providing you that content that you want. Um, and if y'all want even more engagement, y'all want more content, we do these videos, but we have a group as well. Um, and go to our website. It's tghtpowerhour.com. You can get a lot more of this in there. So, David, thank you so much for being with Nick and I today. Um, Good morning. <laughs> Good, oh, yeah. It's How morning you for you. He's in California. I, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. I just woke up like five minutes ago. <laughs> How much coffee have you had? <laughs> Brother, I never stopped drinking coffee. I spent most of my life trying to convince myself that it is a socially acceptable time to drink coffee. So uh, I would agree. <laughs> so that's my life. But the, I just wanted to correct one thing. 100% of my team um, that had been with me for over 18 months, 100% okay. of the original six members all made over $100,000 in a year. Um, so that is good enough as it is. But we expanded to over 20 agents and uh, and then dropped back down significantly in order to come over to KW mm -hmm. and plug into some systems that I really believe are going to be fantastic for anyone looking to join my team in the future. Fantastic. Yeah, no, thanks for clearing that up for us. I think that's important it. for everyone to know. Okay, so David, for those who don't know you, what did you do before getting into real estate? Yes, ma'am. Um, I, uh, I worked in the United States Marine Corps as a machine okay. gunner. Um, I served in Afghanistan. Um, I did go to combat. And before I did that, I worked in the film and entertainment industry for five years and was a Screen Actors Guild member. So oh, wow. I've, I've done some jumping around and uh, real estate is not my first passion, but uh, I definitely enjoy the heck out of it. So what got you into real estate then? Um, well, what got me into real estate was I bought my first house um, when I was getting ready to deploy to Afghanistan. My wife was pregnant and we didn't have a great experience bouncing around and talking to different people. There were a lot of people that immediately because of my military haircut started condescending to me, started being rude to, to us, assuming that we weren't going to be OK when in actuality at the time my wife was making more money than me. Ah, <laughs> so, uh, so that kind of backfired on them. And uh, so but at the end of the day, we ended up finding a really nice agent who uh, did a lot of really good things for us. And then uh, I decided to jump in. Like a lot of my past clients have decided to jump into real estate and it's been fantastic. I absolutely, uh, I love it. I've met a lot of fantastic people and it's really, uh, it's, put, it's put me in front of some, uh, some good talent. Very interesting, very nice. So how long well, have you been Because I saw a need for it, I guess is the, is the answer. I, I, I saw, you know, that I felt like the real estate Industry was very inaccessible for a lot of young people, a lot of uh, Generation Xers, a lot of millennials, and a lot of people that are going to be buying homes in the future. And so because I felt like it was so inaccessible for myself as a veteran and as a young person, I wanted to make it more accessible for more people and stop judging people the second they walk in through the door and want to work with somebody on my team. That's awesome. Do, do you all work with a lot of military or veterans as oh, part yeah. of your client base? Is that a majority of your clients? Oh, yeah. In my first year, I, uh, I closed escrows with uh, four of the major branches, mm -hmm. the Marine Corps, the Navy, the Air Force, um, and uh, the Army, um, all in my first year. So, um, and then of course I've worked with Coast Guard and, and, and everybody, the National Guard. I've had an opportunity to work with a lot of different veterans. So, um, and I have a lot of different veterans working with me. That's uh, awesome. Two of which... Uh, are two of the agents that have made over $100,000. One is my partner, Zach Bach, who is, I've been friends with for over 25 years, left the Air Force, the salsa dancing spy, and, uh, and jo joined uh, the Serpa team. And he was the fastest agent to $100,000 since I did it my first year. Oh, I love hearing success stories like that. And I really appreciate that. I come from a military family myself. So hey, what, what brand? Uh, Army. Army. Well, yep. hey, thank you to your dad, your mom. My dad, my grandfather, my cousin, lots of them. My uncle. <laughs> Service is in the blood. When it's in the blood, it's in the blood. Absolutely. 
So tell my us sister, about my brother in law, my grandpa. It's just one of those things that like when it when it's in your family and it's in your blood, it's just uh it's a part of who you are. It absolutely is. Um, David, tell us about your first year in real estate. So you got in, you saw this need that mm -hmm. uh, needed to be filled in the market for accessibility to real estate sure. agents, real estate, that knowledge. So what what did your first year look like? You jump in, so, your what brokerage were a local brokerage here? What kind of support? I, I jumped in with the local brokerage, uh, you know, um, and it was just kind of, you know, there are a lot of uh, great brokerages that are great for people in the beginning of their careers. Mm -hmm. And I found a good brokerage with a good broker who was uh, the only broker that called me back out of the five brokers that I called. And uh, and then I ended up, I think the biggest problem is a lot of people get into real estate and they have no idea where to start, which is why I'm writing the Machine Gunner's Guide to Real Estate uh, to help people with that. But in my second month, I opened seven escrows. So wow. I got paid $35,000, which was more than I got paid the year prior getting shot at. And then I started a team 10 months into my real estate career. Um, so and made $126,000 or so in my first year. And it was, uh, it was a blast. I loved working in my first year. Um, out of, I think of the 26 or so escrows that I closed, uh, 22 of them were open houses. So, um, I think there's no path to success that doesn't lead through hard work. Wow. So open houses are one of your main lead sources for that first year. Oh, heck yeah. I, uh, I, but I did a little bit of everything. I think you should listen to everybody, consider the source. And then if somebody who is fantastic at door knocking tells you to door knock and they're closing escrows, go freaking door knock. Mm -hmm. If somebody freaking tells you to hold open houses and they're great at working open houses, go hold open houses and find out what works for you. Because what works for me, I hate cold calling, but there are people out there like Zach that have made a career around it. Oh yeah, that's us. We love cold calling and prospecting. So we actually completely remodeled our entire business after talking to you, Elizabeth. Um, you're a huge part of the reason why I came over to Keller Williams and, uh, and you guys and the whole collaborative nature with everybody at KW, every question that I ever ask on lab coat, there's 16 people from KW willing to give me an answer and they're not all trying to recruit me though. Like the Mormons, there's typically an ulterior motive and they're going to try to recruit me. But, uh, but you know, these, I, don't, I don't begrudge anybody that. Where there's value, there's value. And where there's community, like in the Mormon church, with myself being an atheist, there is value, right? And with KW, I, like I've just been drinking the Kool-Aid for a couple of days now, and I'm all about this Kool-Aid. It's delicious. <laughs> I was like, I should have this Kool-Aid three years ago. Yeah, so it's been a week now you've been with KW? Uh, so I officially transferred my license on Friday. Okay. I started uh, on the phones on Monday. I actually, my whole first day I went live on Facebook uh, for four hours from the moment I walked out of my door and I got on the phones and I started calling people about expansion teams, about ESO, uh, because the thing is you have to work. We have so many excuses for not working. I'm so sick of hearing about them that it was driving me mad. So I ended up deciding to just go to KW and working. Yeah. Enough talking about it. Analysis is paralysis. Get after it. I love that. I love that. And you're right. Just being associated with a brokerage doesn't escape the fact they've got to do the hard work or for your agents, just being associated with you and your team. You still have to put the time in and the That's work. Right. You got to put in that sweat equity. Well, let's throw it back to your first year real quick. Okay, so especially if we've got single agents who are watching this or brand new agents or anyone who sucks at open houses because <laughs> I think that it's a it's a big limiting belief for a lot of people that the open houses don't sell the homes, the open Ooh, houses aren't worth it. their Ugh. time, and maybe we're just doing this mm -hmm. to get buyers, which is not such a bad reason to do it, obviously. Nope. But so you clearly have success all the time with is, both. Um, people say open houses don't sell houses. I say that's what lazy real estate agents say. So what's your tactic? Tell us your strategy. Give us I'll tell place. you what, my first year, I, ho I hung 400 flyers for every single open house that I, that I put up. I did it on Thursday or Friday because if you do it too early, it just becomes door trash, right? You hold an open house from 10 to 6 for eight hours. The mega open house is a lie. In 90% of markets, I'm just going to say that right now, the mega open house where people are like, I get over 100 people into all of my open houses. I'm so happy for you, San Francisco. I'm so happy for you, San Diego. But the rest of us in planet Earth have to deal with the fact that we only might get three or four people in and then we have to kill it on our conversion ratio by offering people value. I have never asked someone to sign into an open house. I will never do it. And I give enough value to where people just want to work with me. And I'm teaching this class right now. I do it live on Facebook every Tuesday and every Friday where we do open house role playing. You guys can tune in on Facebook. Love I that. want to be at a different Keller Williams office every Tuesday and every Friday. And I want Zach to be in a different Keller Williams office every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. He's going to be cold calling, 
I'm going to be teaching people how to hold open houses. And between the two of us, we're going to help Keller Williams take our 33 day challenge, which is all about doing the simple things extraordinarily that no one else is willing to do. So give us a little insight now before we have to wait for your classes on Tuesday and Thursday. Heck yes. So the thing is, so first off, so much in life is about body language. So much in life is, and there's three ways to offer value. And the first thing that we do is we hold the house hostage. Somebody shows up, they want to see a home and we say, oh, you got to sign in for security purposes. Shut up. Nobody has to sign in for security purposes. And the first thing that people do is they throw up their hands like this. They back up. They literally recoil from you. You could see them do it. And they say, uh, or they say, I have an agent, which is code word for shut up. I don't see the value. Right. So what do we do? A lot of agents say, well, poach, poach them. Well, your agent isn't out there holding open or they're not out there with you. They might be with their families. They might be coaching a basketball team. They might be eating dinner. That's okay. I never try to poach anyone. I always try to offer value to whoever is in front of me, whether or not I will get a financial benefit or not. If you help enough people get what they want, you will get what you want. And you offer value by talking to people about taxes, talking to moms about schools, and then talking to people about um, – uh, what they can see now, which is the biggest mistake that people at open houses do. They try to get the information and then they try to eventually get them out the door at some point next weekend. People want to see houses during the week. People want to see houses that day. That's why they're there. So if you hold an open house from 11 to three and you try to schedule appointments for four o'clock after the open house and for 830 the next morning before your next open house, you are being proactive in your career and you're giving people an opportunity to do what they want, which is to see houses now. Have the 75 closest listings printed. Have everything that is ready, go direct, that is green, put a green tab on it, which means I can see this house today. I don't have to call anyone. Have every house that has a, that has a pool have a blue tab. Have every house that is an REO, a default, a short sell, have a red tab. And then what you start doing is you start developing these systems and then you tell people about this book and you could say, you know what, all of these different houses that you have that uh, or all these different things that you want. I have three listings that fit your criteria, two of which you can see today after my open house at four o'clock. Does that sound like something that you guys might be interested in? Save you guys from doing the open house circuit? Absolutely. I love that. Oh. We tell our agents the same thing. We have them block off time after to go show potential buyers Bingo. that came in. Bingo. It's, it's, the thing is, is just work. So that's one way. The other way is taxes. A 1.3% tax rate versus a 2.2% tax rate within a mile of each other for a $400,000 house will save somebody $300 a month just by considering a low tax rate. And there are ways to ask people things like if they have a house that they need to sell without asking them, do you need to sell your house in order to buy? Because that seems so threatening. You can say, um, are you guys currently renting? Because we are looking for answers that are affirming. If you ask a renter, are you currently renting? And they say, yes, that doesn't feel bad for them. And they don't have to explain to you that they lost their house seven years ago uh, and that they weren't able to keep it. But if you ask somebody who owns their house, are you currently renting? And they say, no, I currently own my house. That also feels good. Yeah. Do you study a lot of NLP, a lot of neuro-linguistic programming? Not really. It's just something that I kind of picked up on naturally. Um, mm -hmm. I really enjoy NLP. Um, Mike Bjorkman is a great dude to talk to about NLP. He's got so much great content about it. Uh, body language, neurologistic programming, um, all of that good stuff. A lot of people tell me, oh, you just kind of do that naturally. And so I don't overeducate myself on things that um, I just kind of know how to do, but I do study body language. Um, okay. So I haven't specifically sought out... Uh, NLP, but there's this great book and I can't, um, it, oh, it's what everybody is saying. And it was written by a guy who worked for the government and he studied body language and it's got pictures and tutorials in it. And I, I hate real estate books so much that I study everything that is related to real estate and what I'm interested in. <laughs> Love that. So, um, so David, real quick, speaking on education, let's go, let's dive into yeah, that. Sure, your, fir your first year, you know, and, and, and then fast forward now, what, what did your education look like the first year, you know, training wise, did sure. you pay, did you pay for coaching? You got coaching now to, you know, kind of, uh, open that up for us. Yeah. So my first year, um, I just worked like, like I talked to people about being a machine gunner. They didn't hand me a machine gun on accident. 
Like it's accuracy by volume and I am not quiet. I'm, they did not make me a ninja for the Marine Corps. They made me a machine gunner. So the thing is that like when people talk to me about things to try, I would look at their numbers and I would just try it. And so, um, I think that people like uh, they overcomplicate crap. They buy motivational crap. They listen to to people like me or like Gary V go off about how about getting motivated. They read real estate book after real estate book. And at the end of the day, there are actionable things that you can do to get started in your career immediately without spending a bunch of money. So stop overcomplicating it. Get to work. Door knock. Hold open houses and cold call. Love it. Love it. What does that look like now, though? So you're yeah. over at KW now. You yep. know, for, you know what? Four years in, right? Four or five. Four, um, years, four years this month. Four years this month. Now we're, we're looking. We're looking at you're pounding the phones and hitting it up to you know, you know for expansion. What yep. what is your what is your education training look like now? So you have to redefine the grind, right? So uh, as team leads, we get so caught up in just being team leads that we forget that our job is to be an entrepreneur, be a CEO, and work on our business instead of just in our business. And so are you talking about my education and what I'm doing to educate myself or what I'm doing to educate other people? Both, both, yeah, right? Both. So, so you're coming over here, you're drinking the Kool-Aid. And, oh, yeah. and, and <laughs> you know, it can be like drinking from a fire hose at some time and making Heck sure yes. that- you know, it's one, not the swallow, brother. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've been here 20, I've been here what, 10 years. Trust me, I know. Um, yeah. So we look at it from a <laughs> standpoint of, of uh, you know, drinking from that fire hose and also yes. being that entrepreneur, we want to run a profitable expansion business or a profitable okay. team business in general. So what are you doing to, to further yourself on that? And then once you get your team leaders in, what are you doing to help educate okay. and train them? Find out what you do well honor your design and find a way to get paid for that extraordinarily well. And I think that the best way to do that is on a team because like high eye personalities love to talk to people. And if you could pl put them in front of people and show them how to prospect at open houses, they'll do great. High D's are close, 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 close. Uh, no, uh, your success will be defined by the number of awkward conversations that you're willing to, hi to have. So you get them on the phone, you to tell them how to fish, and then you get people like Karen, who I taught this class to a month, a little over a month ago. And she went from taking one listing in a year to taking four listings this month and becoming the top listing agent in her office for the first time ever, just by teaching people how to fish. And whether they come over to the Serpa team or not, I don't care because at the end of the day, if you help enough people get what they want. So at the end of the day, this is my, so I educate myself by reading constantly the things that I'm interested in. Um, and that is constantly changing. So if you want to learn about mass media and marketing, understanding things like the true believer and um, studying Hitler, studying uh, Stalin, studying Jesus, studying Gandhi, studying Dr. Dre, studying Jimmy Iovine, studying genius in all of its forms so that you understand how to get it out in front of people. Because the thing is, if you if a fish judges itself its entire life by its ability to climb a tree, it will spend its whole life thinking that it's dumb. And so you find people that are great people that you can plug into systems. You have them take things like their Myers-Briggs test take things like their disc test, and then they plug in. So what am I doing through Keller Williams? What my job is, is I'm teaching the three breakdowns of the deal. The three breakdowns are this. One, you can't convert at the open house. Two, you can't get that person out the door or a new lead out the door for an appointment. Or three, you can't get your clients to write an offer that doesn't feel greasy so that they don't feel like they have to take a shower afterwards. That's what I'm doing. Zach, on the other hand, my sales manager, is 100% a dialer. So what he's doing is he's just going to dial 8 to 12 every Monday, 4 to 7 every Wednesday, and 8 to 12 every Friday. And what we're doing is we're creating a virtual team. Just plug into our systems. Role play with us. We want 15 to 20 offices all plugged into this video thing so that we've got this up in this corner like this. And you just see a room of people all dialing at the same time that are all reporting their numbers at the end of the day. Or a group of people in different rooms all over the country that are all role playing open houses. And then that way, if you aren't used to dialing, just don't dial for a minute. Listen to Zach dial. Listen to someone else dial throughout the country that's willing to let you listen to them dial. Get used to it. Shake off that bad call. Like I had a bad call at KW. I dialed for like two, two or three hours. I had a bad call. Everyone takes one. <laughs> Shake it off and keep going. Typically more than one, too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Your success will be defined by the number of awkward conversations that you're willing to have. And so the thing is like, and then for team leads, study things like the 48 laws of power. 
study the art of war for the love of God. Like this book is my Bible. Even before I was over at Keller Williams, Adam Nelson gave it to me in my first year in real estate. It's why I started a team. I don't read any other real estate books for the most part because they don't offer value. It's like a 15 second idea repeated over the course of 300 pages. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you started off as a single agent. You pretty much killed it your first year compared to most single agents, let's be yeah, real, thanks, or so most good. agents getting in. So wh what started the expansion to a team? It was obviously getting that book you said, the MREA, the Red Book, was really what spurred you wanting to grow a team. So what did that look like? Who was your first hire? Did you do the model right, or did you do what no. most of us do and do no. it wrong? <laughs> I did it wrong. I absolutely did it wrong. If you read my MREA copy, you'll see that I have – crossed out lines. I've written my own things. I put in there, I was like, I'm going to prove Gary Keller wrong. Like you'll, you'll see me in my, like I do speak speeches in my first year and I'm like, I don't really like 100% about the MREA book, but I like most of it. And so the thing is, there's still things that I'm not doing that are different than MREA. But the thing is, it's jazz, baby. It's jazz. And those are the freaking chords. And if you, you can't reinvent the wheel until you learn how to drive. And so many of us spend time trying to figure out how to reinvent the entire team model instead of studying the model and then figuring out what our brownie is to offer to the world. So who was that higher than for you first? The wrong way. Okay. No, well, <laughs> so it wasn't the wrong way at first. So, so let's, let's go and clarify this. So my part, he ended up becoming my partner eventually, but, uh, and I don't want to say his name out of respect for him because he's no longer my partner as of about a month ago, but, uh, he's a great guy, fellow Marine extraordinarily intelligent, wired the same way as me. So he's also an ENTP. And, uh, and I hired him and another Marine who stuck around for about three or four weeks and then didn't stick around. But um, now he's looking to actually four years later, get back into real estate. So I'm excited for him. Um, but it was those two guys. You have to understand a lot of people want to partner up. They want to do a 50, 50 partnership right off the gate. And that's not the way that 99% of life works. There has to be a cheat. There has to be one person that's going to do it. And it, on my first year, I had closed over 20 escrows at this time. And this uh, guy had not yet closed one. He actually started with KW, had a rough experience at KW, which is one of the reasons why we stayed away for so long. Um, and then, uh, you know, there's, there's bad apples in every bunch. There's bad apples in every bunch. And not everything is going to be for everyone. So uh, part of the Machine Gunner's Guide to Real Estate is going to teach you how to find a good team. Um, so he was uh, he was a great hire, fantastic hire, sharpened me. Um, I ended up making him a partner. I offered to make him a 50-50 partner at one point to try to keep him around, but he didn't want to stick around. He actually got into marketing and, uh, and lead gen. And so he's doing that right now professionally. He's getting paid to do that full time. And then uh, and then my at one point, I wanted to have an all-Marine team, just a bunch of dudes like sweating and yelling at each other, like in the barracks. And then uh, and then my wife encouraged me to bring on my next really, really talented hire, who uh, a female agent um, at the time I was like, I'm not going to bring on any female agents. I just want dudes because it, and that sounds really weird. But being an infantry <laughs> guy, like I am very comfortable with guys, uh, the female energy, which is, you know, I grew up in a house full of women without a dad around for most of the time. Um, the female energy is a different thing to get used to. <laughs> it wasn't something that I really wanted to jump right back into. But um, my wife said, do you want to run a great team or do you want to run a team full of Marines? I'm like, why can't I do both? But the thing is, great people are great people. It doesn't matter if you served in the military or not. True. Very true. Okay. So, so brought brought them on. What's the structure of the team at that time? How, were, how are your agents getting business? How are you helping grow them? Obviously, uh, teaching them their ways in open houses. In the very beginning, it was like we were all just a group of people that were dedicated to one another. We were They were at 60%, 75% for anything that they generated on their own, which was not the best way to do it. But I, you know, the thing is, I didn't have the ability to generate leads at the time. So I was essentially teaching people how to fish, and then we were holding each other accountable. We developed a very intense, like, tribe-type atmosphere where we were all looking out for each other. We were talking several times a day um, up until the, you know, when I had seven people, it still continued when I had nine people, it started to kind of drop. And then our next big hire is what really killed us. But uh, th when we had seven people, I mean, like everybody on the, the cover of that magazine back there made everybody right there made over a hundred thousand dollars. Love every that. Every single one of those people made over a hundred thousand dollars. And uh, oh, excuse me, that's the, not the top agent magazine, but uh, every single one of them. But the thing is, is everything grows, everything has to develop. 
And if you are not working on your business and if you're not being proactive, you will be acted upon. Okay. So you, you get these agents on board, they're prospecting for their own business, whether that's dialing like some of them, whether that's open houses, um, as and we start also to at this point inundating them with leads. Okay. So, you know, this point too, tell us a little bit about what's your role look like. Are you still working with buyers and sellers? How are you evolving as the leader of the team? You have to be willing to fire yourself constantly. And uh, that's something that Roland said at the uh, the closing table, which is uh, a new mastermind group that Mike Ferry is now an owner in. And Roland is in it. Sam from Big Block is in it. It's a cool group of guys. But uh, but this guy Roland got up and he said, you have to fire yourself constantly. And so, um, but that's something that I've been doing throughout the course of my career. In my first year or a couple of months into my second year, I stopped working with buyers completely even though it almost buried me financially and I had to get on everybody a little bit and be like, listen, if I'm going to be the listing agent, you guys have to be working with these buyers or we're going to get buried. And then they all stepped up. It actually, it's a historic meeting for my team. Everybody remembers it. But what ended up happening was uh, I threatened to fire a lot of people that weren't performing. I put up everyone's numbers and then everybody made over a hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> A little bit of fear there, but a little bit of fear. Bit of I don't feel good about it. Michael Hellickson, who was my coach at the time, said, I told you to shoot a hostage, not wave the gun at the entire room. And so I walked around and I just like I, I was frustrated. I was spending twenty six thousand dollars a month on my business. And uh, and these are leads that I could show and track through sync that they were not being called called on. So when you're sending people three, four, five, six leads a day or even one lead a day, if they're not following up on it, and then somebody is paying for something that is not being taken care of properly. And it's unfair to that person. So did you have standards on your team as far as production standards or time yeah. standards? I did not for a long time. So this is what I, so what I ended up doing is I said, you have to make over a hundred thousand dollars a year or you will be fired in the last five months of the year. Um, I had two people that had made an astronomical money and I had three people that had not. And I put up their numbers and I said, you have the last five months to make over $30,000 or I am going to remove you from the team because I can't afford to keep you around. Okay. So what that did was it put them in a situation to where they had to make $30,000 in five months. And if they weren't able to do that, then they weren't going to clear the six figure mark the next year anyway. And so I felt like I laid out the gauntlet. I gave them an opportunity to keep their spot. It was very controversial. I almost lost one person on my team, one of my favorite agents on planet Earth. And uh, but the thing is, is she ended up making one hundred and seven, or was it one hundred and eighty something thousand dollars the next year? And she made uh, so what ended up happening was three people, the three people that were on the chopping block. One of them made uh, in five months. By the way, one of them made over eighty thousand dollars in five months after not making thirty thousand dollars the whole year. The second person made $48,000 in five months after not making more than $30,000 all year. And the third person made $28,500 in the last five months of the year. And I fired her immediately. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Wow. I didn't fire her. Oh, I, I didn't fire her. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was kidding. No, no, but I kept her around. And you know what ended up happening? She ended up being the agent of the year next year. You know what I mean? So the thing is, is you sometimes the hard thing as an as a team lead the worst thing as a team lead especially when you have a big huge heart like i do is being the bad guy yeah being willing to be that person that's like hey listen what you're doing right now for you and yourself and your life isn't working for you it isn't working for your family and it isn't working for your children and so um i'm not going to be the person that's going to facilitate this uh if that means that you're going to hate me for the rest of your life that's okay i want you to either leave and be successful because you hate me Stay and prove me wrong because you hate me. Or three, do nothing. Continue to do nothing. And then I'll be forced to remove you. But I'm not going to remove you because I don't fire anyone. I'll just turn your leads off. You know what I mean? I don't give up on people. I don't give up on people. It is one of the, like, it's, what is the definition of a tribe? A group of people that you would be compelled to share the last of your food with. Read would, Tribe by Sebastian Junger. Phenomenal would, book. That's would you how I say, think about my team. David, would you say that that also comes from, from being in the Marine Corps? Hell yeah, brother. Like yes. it, it, so it came from being in the Marine Corps, but it also came from growing up poor. 
I grew up all over California. I moved over 20 times from the time that I was in elementary school to the time that I graduated high school. I lived in Section 8 housing. I lived in a Habitat for, or no, I never got the opportunity to, to live in the Habitat for Humanity house that my mom ended up earning with us. But I have lived in Section 8 housing. I lived in shelters. And the thing is, is my family tribed up. I started working at a very young age. It's the freaking grapes of wrath at its finest. You have to be willing to show up for your family. You have to be willing to show up for your tribe. And it is either something that you learn at a young age, you learn eventually, or you never learn. And you go to your, go to your grave having never committed to anyone or anything. And you have a, gr a lot of great stories about watching a lot of people do a lot of great things. Y'all, if y'all are loving what David's saying right now, show us some reactions. Let us know that you're here. If you got questions, throw them out there. Like I said, we're going to answer them during this. David, let me ask you too. So I'm a monologuer. I get to. I, I tend to do that. I'll just feel free to tell me to shut up. Oh no, I can totally relate to this. <laughs> <laughs> ask Nick. But anyway, um, you said you know we had no structure. We didn't really have standards at the time. Mine is just thrown out. Make this hundred thousand mark, or you're out. What does that look like now? Is it the same or have we evolved as we've grown? So we had some massive accountability up until we had seven, you know, nine people. And then after that, I encouraged my team to do the hiring. And then that's really honest to God. That's where we fell off. That's when we fell off because I try to work myself a little bit out of the business by saying, you guys hire, you guys hold up people to hold them accountable. And then what ended up happening was they ended up feeling like because they were the ones that were holding people accountable, that they should now be the ones that, uh, that have, ownership. They started splitting off, bringing people from the team with them to their own teams. And so the thing is, I learned the hard way. I learned the hard way. I have, there are teams out there that have four and five people on them from my team doing the things that I was doing. And, uh, and that's okay. I'm glad for them. I'm happy for them. But you know, at the end of the day, you have to look out for yourself. And if you're not looking out for yourself, you're not looking out for your children. So what does my team look like? My team looks like this. You die. You, if you want to, all of these things are optional. We do not hire, we take commitments. It is like the freaking Marine Corps because I believe that there are three different people that are drastically underrepresented in this country. I believe that they are women, minorities, and veterans. And if I, I believe in the profit share model, so I want to give 55% of my profit share back to the top five performers as decided on by their peers in a paper ballot five years after the day that we open in each market center making me a minority owner, minority profit share in my own team and each expansion and making them locally owned and operated. What do you need to do? Go to your freaking KW. Tell them you want the Serpa team there. Ask them what I can do personally to help them support their office by plugging them into massive systems and massive accountability, which will equal, equal massive results. And then what happens is teammates, the, the, our, we dial in, we log into something like this, this Be Live thing, we get people all over the country <laughs> dialing at eight o'clock on Monday for four hours, role playing with me for two hours to four hours on Tuesday, or taking the three breakdowns of the deal, depending on what the market uh, team leader wants in their market that week. Wednesday, dialing with Zach from four to seven now in the evening, switching it up. Thursday, we take off. Friday, I'm teaching again the three breakdowns of the deal or open house role playing and hopefully a different market center. And then Saturday and Sunday, we encourage people to work open houses for four hours a piece. That is 21 hours of, pros or excuse me, 19 hours of prospecting, 19 hours of prospecting and four hours of role playing a week. I love and it. We, we, we tell people, hey, that's a 33 day challenge. I'm teaching a live class on January 30th from the market center here in Temecula. If you want to tune in and watch it. Um, and then on, and I would love for people to video in from all over the country and watch it. And then on Tuesday, the 31st, we're kicking it off. It's the 33 day challenge and it, it we're freaking rocking and rolling. So we're going to be, uh, we're going to be role playing that next day. And then on Wednesday they're dialing and then we're going to end it on, I think February 3rd or February 4th. And then I want everyone to post the results. And then the home, the, the server team, we're going to keep going, but I hope that we helped everybody kill the cap with KW, kill the cap, kill it early, <laughs> and then just freaking make money. Stop focusing on the minimums and start focusing on killing your business, killing the cap, getting profitable. And if you don't want to make money, go to a flat fee company. If you want to make money, if you want to keep more of your own money, kill that cap, make it rain. About 15 transactions is where, where that point is. If you want to do less than 15 transactions, stay at a flat fee company. 
If you want to do more than 15 transactions, go to KW. And if you uh, want to just give a bunch of people your hard-earned money, stay with the Realty G brand. <laughs> so you're a hustler. Your team's hustling. Hell yeah. What, though, do y'all do for work-life balance? I know what Gary life. Keller says about that. I know what Nick and I say about that. Yeah. What do you say about that? So, so work-life balance is extraordinarily important. It's one of the reasons why I cooked in a day off for everybody on Thursday. Thursday is not my day off. It's Thursday till 5, I have my kids. So I have 50% custody of my kids. Work-life balance has been something that has now been enforced in me through divorce. You know <laughs> what I mean? No success in the world will, is worth failure in the home. No success in the world is worth failure in the home. You don't want to have 50% custody of your kids, okay? So what you want to do is you want to find balance. There is no reason why you can't unplug from 5 to 7.30 and do dinner, bedtime, bath time, and story time with your kids for five nights a week. There's no reason why, if you are a team lead, you can't develop systems to where you can take one full day off a week. That should probably be Sunday if you're a team lead. If you are a buyer's agent, you should be able to take three to four hours off here and there, take a full day off on like a Tuesday or a Thursday, and then be a part of a team where people are going to cover for you on your days off. So I just think, you know, I think that we, uh, we think that balance is something that we should work towards and that we should attain eventually. But I think that that costs marriages. I think that that costs children, their parents. And I think that that ultimately costs us ourselves when we forget that we are human beings that need to find balance. But that being said, when you show up to work, you better show up to work or you haven't earned a mitochondrion of balance. Exactly. Love it. I absolutely love that. Um, I love you guys. <laughs> I love you guys. Seriously, though, for a second, Elizabeth, you spent over 20 minutes on the phone with me with Nick uh, before I was even at Keller Williams without you being the because I told you, I said, Joseph Onello already is going to be the reason why I come to KW if I go. And uh -huh. you're just like, I don't care. I'm still going to tell you everything. But yeah, I told you all of our failures. <laughs> I would tell people, he said, I want to teach you to not do all the same things that we did in, in failing with our expansion teams so that you can do what we're doing and succeed now because you guys are running very successful expansion models. You guys are out there. You're killing it. You're holding your team accountable. And I went and I told Zach, who's my sales manager, what you guys were telling me. He's like, see, I told you. <laughs> So that's why we started doing the dialing thing. He said, build me a virtual call center and I will hold people accountable throughout the entire country. I said, well, actually he said, build me a call center. And I said, let's make it a virtual call center and let's do it throughout the country. And he said, rock and roll. And then he proved to me that that's exactly why he's been my best friend for 25 plus years. And, uh, and so he's a great dude too. I mean, I'd love to tell you about him, but uh, he runs my sales team. Katie runs my operations team. Um, and then of course with KW, that's all we really need is, you know, you need your three key hires. You need marketing, you need sales, and you need an operations manager. And then everything else comes. KW has everything else in-house for the most part. They have mm -hmm. transaction coordinators in-house. They have lenders in-house. They have escrow in-house. And if you could have your TC walk down the hallway and hand somebody a freaking file, and then I don't have to drive down to San Diego to beg somebody to work. <laughs> anyway. Yes. <laughs> so, so, David, with all this, yeah, brother. Your your challenges, <laughs> right? So so your challenges maybe a month or three months ago are completely different to maybe the challenges that you're oh, looking at now. So hundred percent. So what what are we looking at challenge wise? I don't have any challenges now. Everybody at KW wants to work. That's <laughs> no joke. So this is what happened. My first day at work, I encourage you to look at it on Facebook Live. Um, my name's David Serpa, S E R P A. So look at that stuff on Facebook and see what I was able to accomplish in four hours from the moment I left my front door. I just went in. And I started calling market centers throughout California. I made 35 phone calls. I got 10 people on the phone uh, that were interested in the expansion. I've talked to four people since that are interested in the expansion. And I had one bad phone call. Every front desk person that I talked to was amazing. Every team lead that I talked to was like, yes, I want ESO. I want it in my office. We have one kind of right now, but it's kind of not really working out. And I'm excited about adding to it. I said, or, in, or if they said, I have one and they're awesome. I'd say, can I, can I get their name? Can I reach out to them and find out what they're doing that works? What else can I do to help you in your market center? What else do you want to hear people saying when they're calling you and saying that they want to launch expansion teams in your market? Because right now, the only way that KW is missing the mark with expansions is that we don't understand it. We call into these market centers and we think, 
oh, well, they have a high price point that I want to be a part of, right? That's not the way that we should do it. I will go to the lower, lowest price points in America. I will go to the, the, the highest price points in America. I don't care. I want people that want to work, right? And so when I talk to a team lead and there's synergy there, and I can tell you right now, there's a couple uh, that were really awesome. And I don't even have the names with me, but uh, there was a, 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 a gentleman, Kevin, out in, uh, in the, uh, the OC out in the Irvine area, uh, Kevin Wong, I think. Um, and I hope I got that last name, name right. And then uh, Yamel in Burbank was super passionate about it too. Um, but the thing is, is there are passionate people everywhere. They just want ESO. They just want agents that are going to come in there and take underproducing agents, great people that have the ability to become great agents, and outside agents and help these team leads have something to recruit for. Help these team leads build this synergy in their office, build this culture in their office through expansion, and then be willing to help other expansion team leads bring expansions to your market. Still sharpen steel. And what will happen is if Nick Good and the Good Home Team, they want to come to the Temecula Market Center and they want to rock and roll, they want to rock and roll in the freaking wine country, an hour from the freaking OC, an hour from San Diego, an hour and a half from LA, and you guys want to freaking sell some real estate out here. Not everybody is going to like David Serpa. I do not jive with everyone, but everybody is probably going to like Nick Good and Elizabeth Austin. I'll tell you that much. And so the thing is, <laughs> That's definitely what you're talking about. One time. <laughs> You do one freaking education event and then you do the th same stuff that you're doing right now through video by holding people accountable in my office. I'll even help you with your, with your team in my area. You help me with my team in your area and win, win or no deal. That's kill not the cap, problem. right? Kill the, <laughs> that's right, man. Let's kill the cap together, brother. The I'm more people that. that I can help on your team, kill the cap, the better. If I could come out to you guys and teach the three breakdowns of, the, of a deal in three or four hours, and then get your whole team out there rocking and rolling. You can. We'll have you. You can cool, go. Let's do it. <laughs> let's do it. I will absolutely 100% put you guys on my schedule for either February or March, guaranteed. We don't even have to work out the details. I'm telling you right now, Zach Bach and Katie Serpa, who right now on, on Facebook is still uh, Boucher, B-O-U-C-H-E-R, contact them. And of course, you guys don't have to do that because we're homies. But contact them. Katie is running both my scheduling and Zach's scheduling for January, February, and March. Where I'm actually going to be in Washington uh, State next week, and I want to do a speaking, a couple of speaking engagements up there. Wherever we go, we want to be speaking to people. Wherever Zach goes, he wants to be dialing. We want to be working, and we want to help people that aren't in those market centers watch us on video doing it live until they're confident in doing it themselves. Win-win or no deal. Absolutely. I and, want and, Gary Keller to adopt me. And, and David, just so. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll change my name. I'll be David Keller running the Serpa team at KW. I'll call you dad, Gary. Give me a call. We'll do the paperwork. <laughs> you got to change your clothes. You got to wear the black shirt and the jeans. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you what. The, the thing is, everybody's got their own style. Everybody's got their own flair. <laughs> and uh, it just so happens that, uh, that you're talking to a guy who's got style and flair and spades. <laughs> and uh, and so you know I've got my own thing going on, and uh, and that's just what it's doing. I love it. So so David, as we kind of wrap this up, got a few left here, um, and and people can ask questions here. I'll spend all day with you, handsome. <laughs> well, I appreciate I get to look that. Look at a real beard all that's day long. I've been looking at it for forty three minutes. Look at this thing. Yeah. It goes in all patchy and white trash. <laughs> I'm like Joe Dirt. I can't help it. It was a little longer this morning too. I had to yeah. had to cut it down just for you. Can, can you give us a close up of that beard? Bring it in, Hanson. Let's see. Bring it in. See, there, yeah. there's not a patch in that thing. <laughs> there's not a patch in it. It's getting gray though. The real estate's making it hey, gray. Brother, I've been going gray since I was 21 years old, brother. I so love it. I love it. So, David, let's yes. tell us like the advice. So, if I'm brand new, I'm coming to you. Give me some advice to to make sure that I'm going to kill it uh, my first year. That I'm going to make you know, 80 to a hundred, hundred thousand. First, the first thing I would tell you is that your goals are too low. And that's the biggest problem that we have with agents. You're setting your goals too low. Grant Cardone, 10 X, my God, you could read the whole book or you could get the gist of it in freaking 15 pages. Because the thing is, it is massive results. Do not decrease your, uh, your goals, increase your actions. And so what I would tell you, Nick Good, brand new agent looking to earn 80 to $100,000, I would say, first off, double your goals. Double your goals first off. 
If you just hold 12 hours of open houses a week and you can average one client every three hours and you make $5,000, you will make over a million dollars this year. Why set goals so low? And then I would tell you, tune in on January 30th to Facebook Live and watch the three breakdowns of a deal, which has helped Karen with a K turn your turn her career around. She's not even with KW. She uh, she took the, the three breakdowns of a deal, took four listings in a month after only taking one in a year. And then I would say, take the 33 day challenge with us on uh, on January 31st, log into our video system. We're going to let everybody log into our video system for the 33 day challenge. And then we're going to continue to do it periodically. And then we're going to encourage other teams, other people, other people with other brokerages to continue working on the 33 day challenge. Because the thing is, you either get paid or you get punished for what you did or did not do three months ago. And so <laughs> you can 100% get paid right away. Do not put time limits on your success. I opened seven escrows the first month that I started holding open houses. Seven escrows. Do not limit your success. Do not shoot for 80 to 100,000. Shoot for higher because at the end of the day, if your goal is to, is to work with four new clients a week, which will make you a million dollars in my market center on a team, on a crappy split, because I always over promise and under, or excuse me, under promise and over deliver. If you can do that, four new clients, you'll make a million dollars. Now you, Nick, if you fell and you do not hit a million, but you hit 780,000, Will that feel better than succeeding in making $86,000? 100%. Hell yeah, brother. Let's freaking increase our goals. You know what I mean? Exactly. So for let's talk goals. What's happening talk in goals. 2018 for the Serpa team? What's happening in 2018? Happening? I love you, Elizabeth. Because <laughs> you always put it right back on me. You're like, hey, Serpa, but what are you doing? So my goal, and this is no joke. This is my real goal. I want over 100 expansion teams by the end of March. That's no joke. If you want to be a part of KW, if you're not even a part of KW right now and you want to walk in through the door, or if you're an agent that isn't reaching your full potential, or if you're a freaking awesome agent that wants to be more awesome and you want to be a part of the Serpa team, go up to your team lead, say that you would love to bring the Serpa team here, and then tell them what we are about. Tell them about the 33-day challenge. Encourage them to tune in on January 30th. And then absolutely 100%, I do not make goals to fail. I do, I'm not alive because I fell at hitting my target. I am not here because I'm good at not being violent. You know what I mean? You have to hit goals. It's all war. And then I would say, buy the Machine Gunner's Guide to Real Estate. It's my book. I'm going to release it unedited in February. I'm going to self-publish it. Yes, there are people who are contacting me about publishing it. I'm already 85,000 words in. Technically, for a new author, you become unpublishable, unpublishable at 75,000 words. I am, it's going to be the only real estate book that you ever have to buy. It's going to be the only real estate book that I am ever going to write. And it's going to be packed full with a ton of content. And it's probably going to end up being about 120,000 words. I want that audio version. <laughs> you know what's funny is I actually wrote a special part in my book just for whoever reads the audio version of it. Because the thing is, is like I, I'm a writer. I, I, I used to write for stage for years. I've been produced as a playwright. I also wrote for screen. You could look up the DeGueo trailer, D E G. U E L L O because I wanted to be a screenwriter forever. I love writing. I love it. I've been reviewed by the LA times and backstage West. I love to write. And so the thing is my book is extraordinarily ADHD, just like I am. And so we're calling it the machine gunners guide to real estate accuracy by volume. And I'm going to talk about real estate and everything about around real estate. There's a whole part where I talk about Oprah and Channing Tatum and all these different things. I talk about combat. I talk about um, starting in your first year and this is how it's structured. One, the introduction, get to know yourself, right? Two, your first year in real estate, how you can make over $100,000 in your first year, but how I would prefer that you make over a million. Three, your second year in real estate, starting a team. Four, your third year in real estate, being, bringing your team to the next level. And then five, the bonus material, how to become a CEO in your business and get into things like influencer marketing, learning how to read a room, neuro logistic programming, and all that next level stuff that you need to know so that I'm writing a book for the beginners, the people that are in the, in the middle, and the people at the top. People tell me, write, write that in five books. Write it in three books. I'm going to put out one. I'm going to charge people like 10 bucks for it. I'm going to put it out there in the world. And what's going to happen is it's going to operate as my manifesto for recruitment for the Serpa team 
but it's also going to help great people like you guys to learn every bit of information that I could squeeze into one book so that you guys never have to talk to me. If you guys want to rock and roll on expansions <laughs> and take all my ideas and never want to give me anything. Because the thing is, there's a lot of people out there that aren't like you guys that don't want to collaborate, that don't want to help people out. I want you to buy the book too. Absolutely. Well, I mean, there's some good notes here. If you can see just all pages full of notes. So I'm taking everything. So um, I'm going give... to keep it a little bit more organized. It's probably actually, you know what? That's a lie. I told you that my book is going to be more organized than your notes. My book is going to be less organized than your notes. It's going to have a whole lot of information in it. Yes. Yes. And that's how my, that's how my brain thinks. So it's, it's very much how, how you are. So what's your Myers-Briggs, Nick and I'm not, Elizabeth? I'm not done the Myers-Briggs, but I'm a, I'm a well, 99 D. I'm on the You're, disc. I'm a 99 D. I'm a 99 D 87 I the Myers Briggs is disc on a whole nother level. There are people talking about Myers Briggs on YouTube that are talking about how to read someone's Myers Briggs by their bone structure, by what? their body language so that oh. you can understand who people are just by the way that they smile and how wide set their eyes are. Sounds nuts, right? But the thing is, is there are licensed psychologists that are writing about Myers Briggs. You can the best Myers Briggs test that you can take out there. I think it's called Sixteen Personalities, and what it does is it breaks down eight pages for you. It's a great mobile app. It breaks down eight pages for you, tells you who you are, who you are in a relationship, who you are professionally, who you are as a friend. Fantastic, Elizabeth. What's your disc? I am an ID. Um... And then I could have guessed both you guys. I really could. <laughs> and I do not remember my Meyer Briggs at all, but I'll put it in the comments below. It's definitely extrovert. I can't. That's all I know. <laughs> I'm an ENTP. So I'm a debater. I'm an inventor. And so like an ENTP is like Tesla. Einstein was an INTP. And so what I did was I studied uh, myself. And I think that this is the biggest problem that most team leads have is they don't study themselves. Um, study yourself. Find out how you're designed and then look up successful people that are designed like you that are both successful and have failed and then find out what you could learn about your life. I can't tell you how much I learned by studying Einstein, by studying Tesla and, and figuring out that people with my personality type are extraordinarily good at making other people money, contributing to the world and then dying broken alone with everybody hating me, or just not paying attention to them. <laughs> Oh my god. Oh, avoid it. <laughs> David, I gotta say, you killed it for us, man. I love you guys. You awesome. We love you. We love, I you. love you guys. And you guys really helped me in my career. I appreciate it. Perfect. Well, we love to hear that. And then also, you know, we want people to, you know, check out David Serpa's expansion team if you're wanting to bring one to it. If not, if they if that's not a fit, we're also looking at expanding in other locations as well. That's right. So that's right. Um, hey, the good know, home team. It's good stuff. It doesn't have to be the Serpa team. The good. It absolutely does not. They've got the goods, right? That's so right. They, yeah. I mean, there's a fit for everyone out there and, and we look for certain certain uh, people as well. And then leave comments down below. David will be, I'm sure he'll answer. He's been, he's been active on I'll Facebook. Answer, yeah. and, and then January 30th, is that when you're going live with yeah, the- Yeah, tell us one more time uh, where people can see you and find tune you. In face, tune into Facebook Live, shoot me a friend request. Understand that I will eventually get to your friend request, but I get a lot of them. And I'm trying to be really protective over my 5,000 friends. Unlike a lot of people that are just trying to max their friends book out because it's not how many friends you have. It's how many of those friends you can influence. And so the thing is, is um, I want people that can influence me and I want friends that I can influence. And so shoot me a friend request, David Serpa, S-E-R-P-A. And if you're so, and, and I'm just going to be 100% honest with you. I don't accept friend requests from attractive people unless they say, I'm a real person. So even if you're on the borderline, because there's so many of those weird Facebook requests, like just whether you're attractive or not, just say, I'm a real person. I guarantee you I'll accept your friend request. <laughs> well, I barely made the cut, right, David? Nick Good with a handsome beard <laughs> like that. Brother, I was like, I under, if I fr freaking accept Nick Good's friend request, I'm going to end up getting all these weird messages like, hey, want to PM me? Yeah. I like guys with beards. And I'm like, yes, I like guys with beards. Yeah, what's That's your account number? Question. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, and, then I, and then I end up sending Nick Good all my credit card information, and then that happens again. Yeah. And that's why I don't accept all of these front requests. They're like, hey, you look super interesting. I'm like, I am super interesting. I'm going to tell you everything about real estate. Let's be friends. And they're like, super cool. Want to PM me your credit card information? And I'm like, yeah, why do you need it? <laughs> that's me. I trust everybody. It's what gets me so worked over. Oh, love it. Love I it. love it. Okay, guys, David just told you exactly where he can find you. Like you 
Well, he told you where he can find you. Please start watching some of his live prospecting. If you want to grow your business, look at someone who's doing what you want. He's a prime example of that. Um, and also, we have our, our Power Hour Facebook group. So if you are not a part of that, like I said, go to tjhtpowerhour.com, and you can find people like David. You can see this video on replay. You can start engaging with some of the top minds in the industry. We are masterminding in there every day, and we're working on growing that to be just a massive value for everyone who's looking to grow. I learned a ton. I've watched a couple of them. They're great stuff. Perfect. Okay. David, well, anything you, David. else you want to leave our audience with today? Uh, geez, what do I want to, what do I want to leave you guys with? Tune into the, to the Facebook video, uh, Facebook live on January 30th. Um, and honestly, um, I don't want to leave your audience with anything. I just want to leave you. Well, Hey, team leads definitely call me up. If you want to expand, I don't care what, <laughs> what state you're in. Let's do that. Uh, but, um, besides that, um, the only thing that I want to leave you guys with is that I miss you both already. <laughs> and I can't wait to get out there and teach that class. And I can't wait to bring you guys out to Temecula to teach your class. Yes. And will you be at family reunion? Brother, you could bet your butt cheeks I'll be at family reunion. <laughs> yeah, uh, Joseph yeah. Bonello said, it's sold out, but I'll get you a ticket. I can't be there for all five days. Like I said, I have uh, I have 50% custody of my kids, but I'll be there for the meat potatoes in the middle of that freaking delicious sandwich. And I will be there every night networking with people. Um, I will probably oh, yeah. bring my podcast equipment to, to help people, you know, maybe interview some people on it's about more than real estate because any conversation worth having is worth recording. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, okay. and then we're going to get kill the cap going out. Yep. Kill the cap. Kill the cap. 33 day challenge. Hashtag 33 DC. Kill the cap. Perfect. Thank you so much, David. Thank you guys. I appreciate you. Thanks, Have a great man. day. Look forward to watching you grow. I, I love you guys. <laughs> Back at you. <laughs>